Suppose leaked footage of his Spider-Man online game has surfaced. Now reports say that said game was canceled, thus gamers are reacting. But the question looms, what if? Well, join us for canceling Spider-Man live action game was the right thing to do. This is the medicine, let's get into this one. What's up, people? What's up, people? What's up, people? It is your boy, MM2K of Geeks, Cloud Dosage, Hard Knock Digital Culture, back again with another episode of The Medicine. And as we said in the bumper, this one is titled, Canceling the Spider-Man Live Action Game Was the Right Thing to Do. But before we get into all that, do us a huge favor. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and rock those bells for notifications, please, so you know when we're dropping these doses. We appreciate all of y'all straight up. All right, and before we get too deep into this video, I just wanna show you guys one thing. So let's check this out real quick. Um, this right here is our uh, uh, an announcement to our giveaway that we're running at the time of this video. Um, it's $70 USD in PSN credit in celebration of the Final Fantasy VII Rebirth streams. There is going to be a link in the description. What you're gonna to wanna to do is follow the instructions on the link watch one of our final fantasy 7 rebirth streams and earn a chance to win 70 dollars usd credit so you can go get the game yourself or whatever you opine all right with that said let's get back to today's video all right so i don't have any notes here this is going to be a rant uh no no talking points i i just think that um, based upon this information that we've got and, and, and the leak that we've seen and for full disclosure I'm not going to show you this leak footage you're gonna have to go on social media it's all over Twitter um, so I don't even know about the legitimacy of it because honestly um, under these circumstances you would have DMCA takedowns and the footage would be removed but it's been up there like crazy and, and nothing's been removed but for the sake of this video because it does look like a legitimate vertical slice of what was gonna be a game. But for the sake of this video, because of that, we are going to assume that it is, that there was an actual game, a multiplayer or live service game that they were gonna do for Spider-Man and it was canceled, okay? And we're gonna talk about why we feel that canceling such attempt was the right thing to do. We're gonna do it in two parts. First part, we're gonna talk about just the look of it. And secondly, what it would have ultimately done to the Insomniac Studio, all right? But before we do that, let's let's just do a quick rundown of what the, uh, what, what, the, what this is all about, all right? So this is courtesy of Eurogamer says footage of Insomniac seemingly canceled live service Spider-Man. The great web appears online. Would have featured playable Gwen Stacy. Um, footage of purportedly canceled cooperative live service Spider-Man game from developer Insomniac titled Spider-Man. The great web has appeared online following last year's ransomware attack targeting the developer and its employees. The trailer narrated by Yuri Lowenthal, the voice of Insomniac's Peter Parker, points to a five player co-op Spider-Man game featuring various multiverse incarnations of the character, including Gwen Stacy, Spider-Man 2099 and Scarlet Spider, alongside Peter Parker and Miles Morales who go up against the Sinister Six in an open world Manhattan. All right, so with that said, I think it's very interesting to, to see all this come into play um, to see that this game was out there, was being worked on likely and them just yanking, <laughs> just yanking the plug out and saying no moss. Now I want to take the time to go into why I think this was a good thing to do. Um, in order to do that, let's start with section one. It, it just didn't look right. I, look, call me a hater or just call me a um, a corporate shill trying to make this a nothing burger. Um, I, I feel like it's newsworthy. It's worth talking about. 
but when you look at the game or the slice or i don't know if it was like a presentation or whatever it just didn't look right it, it didn't scream okay separate online service game that i'm willing to pay another 70 dollars for and invest all this money into it regularly it, it it just did not scream that it looked like a co-op mode for the current spider-man 2 game and if that's what you're giving us why the hell does it have to be a separate game why can't it be dlc take all the live service stuff out of there let me web sling with uh my uh my peoples you know do it in co-op mode and give me some games uh, or some game elements some content to play in lieu of that i don't get at all the need to make this a live service game again for an additional 70 dollars and i and i'm becoming more and more sensitive to this whole 70 dollar price tag so i i I, I got a special video in our discord where i talk about rise of the ronin dragons dogma and how i think we're getting beaten ahead with this 70 dollars price tag but we're not getting everything that we should be getting for a 70 dollars triple a genre defining game right this generation um I, I feel like that you would there would be too much watering down i feel like even though that i didn't mind the effort because it gave us a co-op um fallout game that we all appreciated i feel like it would it would turn out like a fallout 76 and you see how that landed with gamers so instead of trying to make this a full-fledged live service game that's just basically spider-man 2 just with some rough shot co-op added to it and some some monetary stuff to it just make this dlc Make this DLC, give this game some additional life. Maybe add some additional content. Come up with a content schedule to add to this, you know, every now and again. Um, and then that way Insomniac can move on to the next project. I don't think this is worthy of a separate title. It didn't look like it. It didn't excite me at all. I think this was more of just, look, it's a slow no news period. People want something to talk about. And secondly, you got the PlayStation haters who feel abandoned by their console of choice and now they gotta grasp on the straws and make something make a mountain out of a molehill all right now on to the second section why i really think that this would have been a bad idea you you would have ended up turning insomniac into something that they're not to completely understand what i'm talking about i want to do this um let me go to a particular section of the explanation that came from naughty dog themselves when they canceled factions two all right so let, let, let's do that hold on one second here so this is the announcement an update on the last of us online um, they start off by saying, we realize that many of you have been anticipating news around the project that we've been calling The Last of Us Online. There's no easy way to say this. We've made the incredibly difficult decision to stop development on that game. Um, this is, I think, the most relatable and understandable in part that I could appreciate for them canceling this. This is in ramping up to full production. The massive scope of our ambition became clear. To release and support The Last of Us Online, we'd have to pull all our studio resources behind supporting post-launch content for years to come, severely impacting development on future single-player games. So we had two paths in front of us, become a solely live service game studios or continue to focus on single-player narrative games that have defined Naughty Dog's heritage. Okay. I can appreciate that. And I think that's cool. Um, here's what you may be hearing is pushback to that. Well, you can't consider Naughty Dog one of the greatest studios out there because look at Rockstar. Rockstar had a great narrative experience and they um, had the live service game. Rockstar made a multiplied game 
that has lived through three generations. And the purpose of that game was to sell as many copies as possible to get you onto their services or their games as a service or whatever. So they were able to create a narrative part of their game of, of and I'm talking, we're talking about grand theft auto, right? And a live service part. But again, that live service part is what lasted what 13 years or something like that. Like people ran through the single player game. Nobody even talks about the single player experience anymore. It's all about what the live service experience offered, right? So that's not Naughty Dog. Naughty Dog is known for their single player and their storytelling experiences, opposed to just throwing a bunch of stuff that you can do in a game online. Rockstar can live off of that. And for 13 years, they've literally developed nothing but added stuff to the GTA experience. That makes sense for a multiplat developer like Rockstar. It doesn't make sense for a single player narrative driven studio like Naughty Dog or even Insomniac when their job is simply to help steward the PlayStation 5 ecosystem. They're not going to be selling 30 million copies across all these devices because their job is just to help keep the lion share of the console market to them. So that ambition that goes behind a live service game makes sense for Rockstar. A multi-plat developer does not make sense for PlayStation. And I think PlayStation's push for live service was out of knee jerk reaction to, hey, look, number one, when you look at our top 20 games, uh, you know, most of them are live service. So why don't we get in on this? And two, we're, we're doing this to safeguard ourselves because look, we got Microsoft over there trying to buy up everything. You know, I think it was a knee jerk reaction to that. And once they discovered that Microsoft was not going, was starting to go third party, even with stuff that they didn't normally have on other platforms they they backed off they backed off and said look it's not worth the squeeze and i think that makes sense again what rockstar does is truly fantastic it's 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 phenomenal but it serves a different purpose multi-plat developers can sit there and feast off of one game like that because it's just about bringing in revenue to the publisher People are mad that they're just getting remakes from, from Naughty Dog. Naughty Dog doesn't necessarily have to pop out stuff every two years, but they got to regularly put out IP because their job is to sell consoles and help saturate consoles, not just make revenue. That's, that's not the job of an exclusive developer. The revenue was made for the platform holder by the third party software with the cut of the GTA fives and sixes that they get off the dragon dogmas and stuff like that. The rise of the Ronins, the Naughty Dog games and the Insomniac games are developed to help increase the console saturation totally different goal so you got to be able to put a game out put some content out move on to the next one you can't be sitting on creating content for 13 years and that's what naughty dog realized they would have to do with this game and then that and i'm pretty sure that's what insomniac realized that they have to do with this spider-man game and with that being said they got a whole slate of projects that were you know told to us because of those leaks that they're working on with disney there is no way they would have been able to handle output like that and answer that slate of games that they're contracted to do with disney among other things it's just not possible so again when we use gta as a litmus understand yes rockstar made a story narrative part of of gta that was 
critically acclaimed or whatever we forgot about that in a month's time and everybody jumped all over this damn uh gta online and it's been coasting off of that for 13 years that that is not possible for a single player narrative driven studio that has to continuously put out content so people can flock to the console and help grow its saturation we got to be able to separate the forest from the trees. I think Insomniac did the right thing. Number one, the game just didn't look like it was worth it. It, was, it looked more like a cash grab the way it was presented. And two, even if it did, you're turning Insomniac into something that they're not. The same thing that Naughty Dog realized. And it's better to just let them create the, the story narrative games that have DLC that add to the content that give it, you know, a longer shelf life, but then also gives them breathing room so they're not stuck making the same game for 13 years. Okay. So hopefully that makes sense. I think they made the right decision. Um, I, I'm hoping what happens is that this gets guard railed and it's, it, it's, it's a considerably sized DLC. That would be awesome. And that would definitely give Spider-Man 2 more sales and, and, and a longer shelf life. We'll leave the the um we'll leave the, the games as a service stuff to Arrowhead and whoever else can specialize in that stuff. But Sony needs its top single player stewards to put out those single player games. And hopefully they can partner with with studios with um an online pedigree or games as a service pedigree and they can develop games as a service titles and maybe even their own their own bungee can get their stuff together and, and create a game that that's uh you know what i'm saying that's worthy of a claim again uh and hopefully marathon is that we'll see but again you gotta you you, you can't throw everything in the same pot like jambalaya let Insomniac and Naughty Dog do what they do and hopefully Sony can partner and find somebody else like they did with Arrowhead to create greatness on a games as a service scale like they can do. And with that said, that's it from your boy. Let me know what you think about all this in the comment section below because like I always say, who cares what I think. But if you did like what I had to say, check out the links below to follow me. Those links will lead you to, again, geeks, cloud dosage, and hard knock digital culture. With that said, y'all have a wonderful gaming day. Peace.